Welcome to our lecture online. Sometimes we get an interesting request from a viewer. They say, well, can you do a problem like this? Or they ask a question about a particular problem because we hadn't covered anything like it yet. And so I did find indeed in our series of uh, physics problems where we did simple harmonic motion problems, we did not have anything remotely like this one. I thought it was kind of interesting. So here it is, request, viewer request number one. And we're going to kind of keep that as a, a running thing, as uh, more viewers request things. We'll just go ahead and record some of those interesting ones and start doing videos on them. So here's our first view request. Notice we have an object with mass m attached to a spring. And let's say that there's no friction, so mu is equal to zero, and the object is going back and forth like we have in the case of simple harmonic motion. So you can see here that the object is past the equilibrium point, a distance x away from the equi equilibrium point, moving at velocity v. The mass is equal to m, and the spring constant is equal to k, and presumably that the maximum displacement will be equal to a, which is of course the amplitude. They also give us the following information. They tell us that when x is equal to 3 meters, v is equal to 4 meters per second, and when x is equal to 4 meters, v is equal to 3 meters per second. And they want us to figure out the amplitude, the frequency, the period, and so forth. So how do we do that? Well, it's always a good idea to go back to the basics. The basic equation is that the energy total is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, which means that one half Ka squared, which is the total energy put into the system, is equal to one half mv squared plus one half kx squared. And then if we solve this equation for v, which we've shown plenty of times, v would be equal to the square root of k over m times a squared minus x squared. So that's the equation we get for velocity. Now notice that the velocity is related to x using this equation. a is a constant, and k over m, of course, would be a constant as well. So what we can do is we can first Multi uh, not multiply, but square both sides of the equation. So end up with v squared is equal to k over m times a squared minus x squared. And then we can put these values into the equation twice to get two separate equations. So in the first case, we have v is 4 meters per second. So we end up with 4 squared is equal to k over m times a squared minus x squared, and x would be 3, so it would be 3 squared. And in the other case, we plug in the other numbers, we can say that v squared, in this case v is equal to 3, so we get 3 squared is equal to k over m times a squared minus 4 squared. So those are the two situations it gave us. We plug both of those into the same equation, and we end up with those two equations. So when we then multiply everything out, we get the following. We get 16 is equal to k over m times a squared minus 9. And we get 9 is equal to k over m times a squared minus 16. So those are the two equations when we work out those, those squares. Now what we can do is we can divide the one equation by the other. So if 16 is equal to this, then, and 9 is equal to this, then 16 divided by 9 must be equal to this divided by the right side. But in other words, 16 divided by 9 must therefore equal the ratio of k over m times a squared minus 9 divided by k over m times a squared minus 16. So we simply did a proportionality. If 16 equals this, and 9 equals this, then 16 divided by 9 must equal this divided by that. Notice when we do that, the k over m cancels out, and we only have one unknown in the equation, which is the amplitude a. So we can solve for the amplitude in that equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply. We end up with 16 times a squared minus 16 is equal to 9 times a squared minus 9. I move this over here and move this over there. And now I have that equation. I multiply everything out. 
16a squared minus 16 times 16 is 256 equals 9a squared minus 81. Moving like terms to both sides, so have 16a squared minus 9a squared is equal to 256 minus 81. 16 minus 9, that would be 7a squared is equal to 256, that would be uh, 175. And then divide both sides by 7, I get a squared is equal to 25, or a is equal to 5. And of course, in this case, that would be 5 meters. So the total amplitude of the system is 5 meters, which means that this equation now becomes, uh, or this equation, doesn't matter which equation we use, we can write that v is equal to the square root of k over m, times 5 squared minus x squared. The only thing we don't have is we don't have the value for k and for m. However, if we know what a is, and we can take v and x for a particular situation, we can then at least solve for the, for the ratio of k over m. So let's do that. Let's take one of these equations and replace a by what a is equal to. So let's take the left equation. 4 squared, and I don't need to write 4 squared, I can simply write 16 is equal to k over m times, instead of a squared, we'll write what a squared is equal to, which is 25 minus 9. So 16 equals k over m times 16, and that means, of course, that k over m is equal to 1. We don't know what k is, and we don't know what m is, but the ratio is equal to 1. Notice that the unit for k is equal to newtons per meter and the units for mass is equal to kilograms and so that would be one newton per meter times kilogram. And of course, a newton is a kilogram meters per second squared. We can simplify that, but it's not really necessary. So then another thing we should know is that the angular frequency omega is equal to the square root of k over m which of course is equal to the square root of 1, which is equal to 1. And then we know that omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, or the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times omega, which is equal to 1 over 2 pi times 1. And if we then solve for that, and for that we need a calculator, it's essentially... Um, 2 pi f, f would be omega divided by 2 pi, okay? So the frequency would be 1 divided by 2 divided by pi would be 0 0.159, so 0 0.159 uh, hertz or oscillations per second. Then if we want to find the period, which is equal to 1 over the frequency, which is equal to 2 pi, uh, 2 pi divided by omega, which is equal to 2 pi divided by 1, which is simply the inverse of that. So take the inverse of that, and we get 6.28 seconds. So the period of oscillation is 6.28 seconds, the frequency is 0 0.159 hertz, and the amplitude is 5 meters. The only thing we don't know is k or m, but we simply know that the ratio is equal to 1. So if m is equal to 1, then k is equal to 1 newtons per meter. If m is equal to 2, then k is equal to 2 newtons per meter, and so forth. But at least we found all the relevant information on this problem by using that simple mathematical trick. And that is how it's done. Also, that was a brilliant mathematical trick. It is. It's very neat. and, and uh, it's again just simply the ratio. If this equals to this, if this equals to that, then the ratio of these two must equal the ratio of that two. It's as simple as that. Just like that. You just have to think of it. You would have thought of it, right? Um, the first time, probably not. <laughs> Somebody showed it to me once upon a time, and I. No, it was a teacher that showed it to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but that's how it's done. And yeah, if there's any more viewer requests, We'll be happy to do more, more of those types of videos.